Hi, I'm Earl. Welcome to my shop. Several months ago, I decided to rearrange my shop. I did a lot of cleanup. I moved every stationary tool in the shop except the router table. Uh, in the process of that, I decided that my little three foot by six foot work table uh, was just not sufficient for what I wanted to do. I had been watching Ron Paul's videos about his build of the Paul Workbench 2, and I decided that that was the way I ought to go. So I ordered the plans, I bought some material, and I made my workbench. I've been super pleased with it. I thought I'd show you some details on it today. I'm not going to do a build video. Ron has excellent videos on his build process. The plans are excellent. I'll post a link to the to his plans and videos in the uh, description below. I just mainly like to show you the differences I made in mine versus what he had in his plans. Ron is a professional house builder, and uh, his design was primarily to be light and portable so that he could carry his work table from job site to job site. I didn't have any need for that. I'm not going to carry mine anywhere. One thing I made different was he made his out of half inch plywood and I decided to use three quarter inch plywood on mine. I'm not really concerned about the weight. It's not being moved much. He also supports his table on saw horses, and I decided I wanted mine to be a roll around. Uh, Jay Bates gave me that idea. I'll post a link to his website also for some of his changes to the Ron Falk's design. And the other thing I did was I made mine two inches thicker. The sides are two inches higher in mine and I'll show you the reason for that shortly also. One thing I did was made drawers, actually slide out shelves is more like it. Uh, that go all the way across, they're four feet. If there's something on that side that I need that's in the drawer, I can pull it out far enough to get it from this side without having to walk around. That makes it very convenient. There are four of them. Uh, they've been great for storage. The base is a torsion box made from two befores, and a sheet of half inch plywood on, on top and quarter inch plywood on bottom. There are some diagonal pieces of two by six that go across here. I used four inch swivel casters on each corner to make it easy to roll around. Easy might not be the right word. It will roll. I do have to put some weight on it to move it, which is good. I don't particularly want to move it much. I might rearrange it, uh, change the position slightly, but uh, I'm not moving it much. If I need to, I can. I've got it pretty well loaded. This area is used for storage. My primary goal was to have a height here that would allow me to put a couple of my smaller lathes underneath uh, without any problem to store them. And that's where the two inches came from here. I just had room for it uh, to get to the right height. And I went with two inch higher sides on it, luckily. This table serves as an outfeed table for my table saw, uh, which is really great. I finally can handle ripping uh, four by eight sheets of plywood without much trouble. I got room on the other end. Same drawer you saw, saw slide out on the other side, slides out this side. And uh, my sliding drawers are very simple. I, I used a quarter inch sheet of plywood, about 15 inches by four feet, uh, and framed it with pieces of two or four that were ripped in half. Uh, not the prettiest drawers, but it serves my purpose well here. These are waxed on the bottom, and they slide on a couple strips of two before that were ripped down to provide the right clearance above the bottom. These are loose. I can move these if I need to. I can take them out if I need to. Uh, but with all these being waxed, they slide very well. It's just, it's just very convenient. On each end of the table, I mounted a power strip. 
20 and has a moxon vise designed by Jay Bates. I'll include a link to that in the description below. Underneath you can see where the pipe clamps come through. Uh, they don't interfere with the drawer. Uh, as long as I don't stack anything too high in the drawer. I made a pair of auxiliary jaws for the clamp that uh, allow me to hold round objects, threaded rod or dowels or whatever. It's nothing more than some grooves cut into a piece of a couple of pieces of wood. You can use that to cut off or whatever. There's a set of larger ones down here that can be used. larger stock and uh, also cut some vertical grooves in it vertically to hold a rod or dowel vertically if I need to. Works pretty good. The dog holes in the work table work well. They're three quarter inch holes. I have some plastic uh, dogs that came with a couple of workbenches, uh, Black & Decker workmates, uh, they work in them. Uh, clamp, I've got several clamps that I've adapted to work. Uh, the small clamps from Harbor Freight, I ground the button off the end of it on, the, on a grinder. Lift that off, lift it up through the hole. Slide the clamp back on. And that's secure. Not going anywhere. Of course there's multiple locations for it. made the sides two inches higher here, I would not have had room to have put these clamps in the hole here. It just would not go with a very close fit. Uh, I didn't know that when I did it, but I guess I just really lucked out uh, when I made the table. Another way is a, is a small basic clamp that I again ground the end off so that the end of the thing would slip off. Uh, yes, it makes it a little unhandy occasionally because it will occasionally slide off when you don't want it to. But uh, again, it slips up. That slips in place. And that tightens down. Yes, I know Festo and several others make clamps that hook in. Uh, I just haven't brought myself to pay the price they want for them. Uh, this is working for me, so I'll save my money on those clamps. A couple of times when I was doing a job that was going to require repetitive clamping over and over, I used a couple of the clamps I use on the drill press table bolt with a washer and a wing nut on it, screw the bolt to the clamp, tighten the wing nut, and then it's just a vice grip type adjustment. And that allows me to clamp quickly when I'm doing repetitive operations in the same location on the table. Works real well. I will admit that occasionally a nut or a screw will fall through one of the holes. Not much trouble to get it out with the sliding drawers real handy. 
But uh, in thinking about it, I did think about putting some three quarter inch dowels down in the holes. Uh, that way the stuff doesn't fall through. I cut them uh, an inch and a quarter so that they can pop up if I need them to use them as uh, dog, dog whatevers if I need them to position something on the table. Just push them from underneath and they're ready to go. Uh, put them back down. And I've done, uh, I don't know, about a dozen that way. I'll probably buy uh, another couple sticks of three quarter inch dowel the next time I'm at the home center and go ahead and plug all the holes this way. Seems to be working well. To say that I'm pleased with this work table would really be an understatement. I have found it to be just fantastic. I am super satisfied with it. I am really glad that I made this investment and that I made this work table. And my big thanks go to Ron Paul for his design, his excellent plans, and his videos. If you haven't checked out his videos, really, you really need to. He's got excellent build videos. He's got some excellent SketchUp tutorials also that I found very good. I hope you liked this video. If you did, give us a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. Y'all have a great day.